Hey everybody, welcome back. So this month we are going to cover the five stats that you as a buyer of a home this spring needs to know. And I'm also going to tell you why. Normally we cover the stats from a seller's perspective, but this month we're going to look at this as to why are these things important for you as a buyer to know and how does it impact your transaction. Stick around. I'll be right back with all that information. Yeah. Uh, here we go. And welcome back. So here we are, another month come and gone. And yes, I've got my glasses on because I'm about to give you some stats and break some things down to you. So, but do us a favor. If you find any value from the content that I'm about to give you here, do us a favor, click like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell and drop me a comment below. Tell me how it helped you and or what you learned from this video, because that's what these videos are all about is helping you understand how the market is working when we do these update on the stats monthly. Okay, so let's break this down. This month, we're going to talk about these stats from the perspective of a buyer. So normally every month we take a look at the Racine stats and we say, okay, sellers, this is what you need to pay attention to. This is how it's going to impact you. Now, buyers, you actually need to pay attention to the stats as well. And here's the main reason why. These stats will set you up for success because if you go into a transaction, knowing what your competition is, knowing what the things of the market are, you can actually pick pitch your offers so that you are more likely to get them accepted. And that's really what every buyer wants. Every buyer out there wants to know that when they make an offer on a house that they absolutely love and adore, that it's going to be accepted. And at the end of this video, I'm actually going to give you one other tip that will super help you get an offer accepted that is not about waiving your inspection because we don't tell you to do that. All right, so let's jump right into this. So first of all, there's a couple of different stats that every buyer should be paying attention to. So the first one is list prices. So the list prices in Racine right now for the March um, of this year, and I'm also gonna go over the quarter numbers. So the list prices, the average list price in March was $257,230. So $257,000 is the average list price for the city of Racine. Now this is specifically the city of Racine that we're talking about today. So when buyers, when you go out there and you expect to see a listing, okay, expect that your average price is going to be close to $250,000. However, according to the stats, and these are the quarterly stats, you shouldn't expect that your list price is necessarily going to reflect, or at least not the original list price, isn't going to accurately reflect, reflect your sales price or what you're going to pay. The average actual sales price. Now, keep in mind, sales prices may not be your offer price. Sales price might be after you make a successful offer and then negotiate the price down what it actually closes at. So don't be fooled by that. But for example, the average sale price in March was 179,687 and for the quarter it was 175. So here we are at the quarter um, list price average was 220. So if you're looking at everything from January, February, March, and that's what you're looking at, well, your list price to sold prices, the average price of a house in the city of Racine is still under 200,000. That makes this market very, very affordable. However, I do want to quantify this a little bit. And the reason is buyers, you have to set yourselves up for success by adjusting your expectations. If you're looking at a house that's under 200,000, you cannot expect that it is going to have a, a finished basement, B, that it's going to have three bedrooms and two and a half baths, and C, it's gonna have a two and a half car garage. No, that's not what the average house in Racine, or at least in the city, looks like. Now, some are nicer than that, some are not, but the average house in the city of Racine does not have granite countertops. It does not have a beautiful kitchen and a beautiful bathroom. It has a very functional bathroom. It has a very functional kitchen. It doesn't mean it's going to be ugly, but it doesn't mean it's going to be updated. You want it updated, then you're looking at a higher price point. So just adjust your expectations for that buyers. When you're looking at these houses that the for the quarter, the average sale price was 170, 175,000 and change, 176 almost. 
So if you're looking at houses this spring, adjust your expectations to what an average house is in Racine. Now that also means that if you come across a house, because there are houses out there that are above average. So you come across a house that has granite countertops or it has a magnificent kitchen that you just fall in love with, Please keep in mind, you're paying over 200,000 for that because the average price on that is gonna be higher. It's gonna be closer to 225 because that's an above average house for the city of Racine. If it has a finished basement and it has two full bathrooms because the average house in Racine has three bedrooms, one bathroom, maybe one and a half, right in that range. It m will probably have a detached garage, not attached. So all of these factors play into that average house. All right, now, having said that, if there's not even a garage on site, not even a detached one, that's below average. You should be looking at under 150 if you don't have a garage at all. Your price point should be around 150. If it doesn't have a garage, doesn't have a finished basement, two bedroom, we're really looking at the average price and we're seeing being a closer to 150 but an above grade is going to an above average is going to be closer to 250 so that's why we're right around that 200,000 mark just below it in the 170s 180s and as the spring goes on we're going to see that adjusting a little bit so the next step we're going to look at is your solds versus listings so basically how many houses came on the market this month versus how many houses were sold this month if the sold number is higher than the listed number so the amount of houses that came on the market is lower than the amount of houses that were sold, that's a problem. That means that you are having some really steady competition. We're not telling you to waive your inspection contingency. Please don't do that. There is no house, no matter how phenomenal it looks, that is worth waiving your inspection contingency. Please protect yourselves because this is the biggest thing. And if you have an agent that tells you, well, you might get this home if you waive your inspection contingency, they're not looking out for you because there is no good agent out there who is going to tell you that it is in your best interest to get it. They might tell you that if you waive your inspection contingency, you have a better chance of getting your offer accepted, but they are not working in your best interest if they are telling you that it's better for you to waive your inspection contingency. Sorry. That's just not a truth. They're not working for you. They're working either for the seller or they're working for themselves, not you as the buyer. So make sure that you keep putting those inspection contingencies in, even if you're up against tough competition. The solds in March were 59 and the new listings were 58. Now that's a problem. Now, overall for the quarter, we're still okay because for the quarter, we had 154 houses listed in January, February, and March, and we've only sold 132 of them. But that still means there's a very small margin between those two numbers, and we need to be careful of that. So March was actually a really good month for sellers. So buyers beware, or buyers be aware, I should say, that there are not enough houses coming on the market to meet the demand that is out there. So that's something to pay attention to. All right, so our next stat that is really important for you buyers to pay attention to is the absorption rate. Now, the absorption rate last year was 0.75, and if you haven't been paying attention to these videos, buyers, the absorption rate means how many houses are listed versus how many houses are sold and how many months of what we call inventory are available. So last year at this time, we only had up three quarters of a month of inventory. So basically, we had three weeks of inventory last year. This year at this time, we actually, for the quarter, we actually have almost an entire month of inventory. Now, March was really low. March was actually only three quarters of a month, but for the quarter overall, when we look at those numbers across the quarter, we are looking at a 0.91, which is almost a full month, about three and a half, almost four weeks of inventory out there. So that's positive, but I will tell you, again, it's still gonna be a really tough spring for buyers as far as um, don't expect prices to come down. Don't expect, expect sellers to accept really cheap low ball offers. We're not at that phase in our market yet. Okay, so now let's talk about the average days on market. Now the average days on market is something that buyers you really should be aware of because again, what are the average days? How long is it taking to sell a home? So in 2023 last year, it was taking in March, it took it was took 31 days to get a house from listing to selling. This year, 35 days. To be honest, that's a negligible difference for the month of March. That's really like a day or two, four days. That 
that's really not that much difference. And if we look at the quarter on quarter last year, it was 31.9 days. And this year it is 31.8. So again, when we look at it in the quarterly aspect, it's only taking 30 days. So if there is a house, however, buyer, so this is the key for you. If there is a house that has been on the market for 60 days or more, that is below average. That means there may be a chance for you to do some negotiation. You may have a chance to get in on that one and actually nab it at a cheaper price. I do need to put a caveat to this because if it's been on the market for 60 days, that means something's wrong with the listing. However, something wrong with the listing doesn't mean there's something wrong with the house. It just means that there's something wrong in another way. Either the agent doesn't know how to market the property properly, and as a buyer, you might get to take advantage of that. Number two, the other problem it can be is that the seller is unreasonable on their price and they've listed their house too high. Buyers, be aware that there are a lot of sellers out there who actually have the mindset that says, I'm gonna list my house this high, and if I get a lower offer, I will take it. I will go for it. I will negotiate that. They believe they should list their house higher than what they expect to get for it. And they're ready and prepared to go lower, but they won't do it for their agent. They'll only do it for a buyer. So one of those two things, there's a disconnect there on the seller side and buyers, that's a chance for you to take advantage and maybe get yourself a real gem of a house. This is actually the technique that flippers use all the time. Um, they look at houses. In fact, most of the investors and flippers that I have worked with in my career, they actually don't even look at houses in the first 30 days. They won't even consider those because there's no value to be had there. And they know that if they wait for that 60 or 90 day mark, whatever is left over, those sellers, if they are actually having to sell, they're motivated and they're going to get that price to where they can sell it because they need to. So buyers, that's a tip from the investor side that it doesn't mean that it, the house is in bad shape. It just means the price might be wrong or it might mean that the pictures are really terrible. That's another thing. Buyers. Yes, I know you want to look at the pictures online and you want to see how gorgeous and how pretty they are. But if those pictures are really bad, they're poorly taken, there are probably about 50% of the market that's not even going to go look at that house because they don't have the insight that you have. Sometimes it's just a bad photography job. All right, now finally, buyers, let's talk about the other thing, the sale to assess. So here's a really great way for you to know whether your offer price is going in at a great price. It's called the sale to assess. All right, buyers, so here's the last stat you need to be aware of, and that is the sale to assess. Sale to assess means we look at what the sale prices are, we compare them to the tax assessment, and we get a percentage off of that for the average house in Racine. And and so if we look at that for the city of Racine and actually for city of Racine and for Racine County, all of that information is public record. You can actually go to the Racine County website. If it's a city of Racine property, the Racine County website will redirect you into the city portal and that's fine. Um, but all you have to do is go to racineco.com, um, .com, I believe it is. But anyway, just go Racine County, Google that. And what you can do is you can actually go to the property tax assessment, find the property tax assessment for that home in Racine you're considering, and then take that number and if it's an average house, take it and go times 1.4. That's what the quarter is saying. Last month in March, it was 1.36. This month it's 1.4 um, point and, and 55. But anyway, basically 140. So if a house is listed or if a house is assessed rather at 200,000, then you can expect that that house, if it's an average house, will be going for 280 because that's what that 140 means. You're going to take that 100% and you're going to times it times 1.4. So 280 would be the right price and the way to go in at that pricing if it's an average house in decent condition. So 140% is what the last quarter is showing us. Now that means if a house is 150, so let me do the math on that because I'm not really great, but there are a lot of houses in Racine that are 150. So I'm gonna pull up my calculator here and there's a lot of houses, 150, 000, 000 times 1.4. That gives us a sale price of about 210. So. If you're thinking about what you want to put an offer on, that sale to assess number can be really valuable to you. And right now, that's what they're selling for. If your agent doesn't even know what sale to assess is, 
you might want to consider getting a different agent. So sale to assess is a super important number when it comes to deciding what price you should or could pay for a particular house. Now, again, keep in mind that 1.4 is based on the average. So some houses are going for more and some houses are going for less. But if it's an average house for the neighborhood it's in, 1.4 is the right number to be timesing that tax assessment number by. All right, there's two ways, buyers, that you can win out and you don't have to actually waive your home inspection. If you are already going to have to do 3.5% as your money, then put down 3.5% as your earnest money. There are so many sellers out there who will say, that means they're financially stable if they have that 3.5% already in hand and they can do that as earnest money. Hmm. I might consider this buyer. If you're putting down 5%, consider putting down 5% or at least don't do the minimum 1%. A lot of people say 1% is the minimum and it is. It's really the minimum, but that doesn't mean the maximum. Show your financial stability to the seller by putting down more earnest money. So many agents don't seem to get that, that when you show more earnest money, sellers are impressed. Sellers go, huh? All right, this person's not messing around. They actually are serious about buying a house and sellers love serious buyers. Serious buyers are the ones who get their offers accepted because sellers want to know this isn't a game for you because it's not a game for them. Tip number two is make sure that you have a phenomenal lender. So I personally have two lenders that I promote and here's the reasons that I promote them. Number one, they double check all of your details before they give you a pre-approval. It sometimes takes them three to four days to do this because they have to verify everything. But once you have a pre-approval from them, sellers will talk to their agent and they will say, in fact, on Reddit today, we were just having this discussion about how sellers it's not always about your down payment, like how much. It's not about whether you're FHA or whether you're VA or whether you're conventional. It is sometimes about who's your lender. If your lender does their homework and your lender has a reputation for closing every single one that they approve, your lender, and it's not the lender that flakes out, your lender is gonna buy you some cred with the seller. So who your lender is, is super, super important. If you want to know the recommendations that we have for lenders, just do me a favor, shoot me an email at Kimberly at TAMTHomes.com. I'm going to put that down below. So the two tips that you need to know is you need to know, number one, put down more earnest money. And number two, make sure your lender is rock solid and has a rock solid reputation. Those two things, even if you have a low down payment, will get you offers, will get your offers accepted. And if you want to know who the rock solid lenders are in this area, shoot me an email, Kimberly at TAMTHomes.com. Hopefully this has been really helpful for you today. And once again, if you found any value in this content, do me a favor, click like, comment, subscribe, turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. Only a quarter, only 25% of our videos are about the market stats. The other 75% of our videos are about things you can do in Racine, neighborhoods you should be aware of, what to expect in those neighborhoods, um, where shopping is, the best restaurants, the, whatever it is, it's all about the city of Racine and actually the whole area east of the interstate for Racine County. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.